welcome to Vakari. I'm your host, Linda McCarroll, and I'm here today with Father Matthew Abraham from St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Zephyr Hills, Florida. Welcome, Father. Thank you, Linda. Can we start with talking to the viewers about your life in India, how you, the seeds of Catholic education and formation mm -hmm. were started? Yeah, I was born in a very traditional Catholic family, and uh, we are four children. And uh, I'm third of the, uh, you know, children, our family members. And uh, I have two brothers and one sister. And uh, they are all in India. And uh, I, am, I became priest. And uh, actually, um, my vocation started, really, if I speak, from my mom's part. Because mom was such a, a devotional woman, you know, she used to... Uh, instruct us so much in our religious life, especially um, with regards to the church going and all kind of things. You know, mm -hmm. actually that was a big inspiration for me. Yeah, that is how I started mm -hmm. uh, my. Um, actually, my priestly journey started from there. I can say, uh, rightly, you know. Mm -hmm. so later, there is lot, uh, all kinds of influ uh, influence, like um, you know, some of the missionary priests. Uh -huh. Those who visit to our church, mm -hmm. I mean, our parish, and by seeing, um, you know, especially the priests, they influence me a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, my, you know, you know education starts with, uh, you know, nuns. I can say that because many of the nuns were my teachers. Oh. So that also influenced me a lot. I see. Very good nuns we had, you know, mm -hmm. you know. Um, many of my, I, mean, I, I think I, my fifth grade, till fifth grade, uh, nuns used to instruct us and teach us and also even the catechism, you know, they oh, used nice. to teach us all that, influenced me a lot. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning, I can say. Yeah. Do you have any family members that were priests or nuns? Um, immediate family members, I don't have any man, but I have got my cousins, um, there are three uh, Four nuns are there, my cousins. Oh, that's wonderful. And also there are two priests, mm -hmm. my cousins, yeah. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. And were you leaning towards anything, any particular uh, field of work or music or art in your youth? Um, I used to act a little bit of, yeah. that's what I used to uh -huh. do. That also mainly because of the, you know, nuns. You know, they used to instruct us everything, you know, mm -hmm. like you yeah, to said, with regards to our life formation of character, etc. Right. So I give a lot of credit to them. A well-rounded. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not just focused on one yeah. particular thing. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And when did you feel the call that God was calling you? As I said, I think it was there from very young age because oh. mom used to uh, wake us up early morning and you know send to us to the church for the daily mass. Oh. And you know, that time on us, as I, I can see that there is a love for Holy uh, Mass and Holy Eucharist and also priesthood, etc. started. Um, but particularly, if I say, um, there was a very particular priest, he's from my own parish, and he influenced me a lot. Oh. And by seeing him, very specially, I thought, oh, I too wanted to become a priest. Mm -hmm. As I said, there, is, there were also like other influence, like other priests, like, you know. Mm -hmm. But that was very particular. And uh, um, I also was working with some of the uh, pious organizations in our parishes. And also I was an altar boy. Uh -huh. So that all influenced me, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, knowingly or unknowingly, that seed was there right. in my heart. Being part of your everyday life, your your education, mm -hmm. your 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 family, mm -hmm. so Catholicism and that atmosphere surrounded you. Yes, yeah. Uh, when you finally decided to go forward with this, uh, what did your mother and father say? I lost my father when I was six. Oh, I'm sorry to hear. See, yeah, but you know, as I said, my mom was such a wonderful woman and she struggled a lot to bring us up before children and her hard work and her faith tremendously influenced me because after my father's death we were like in a nowhere like you know it was so difficult for her because she had no job of her own you know and she struggled a lot she was very happy that I am going for the you know this particular vocation there was no 
objection from her part. She was perfectly and completely 100% that she was happy for that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Did you have any struggles or obstacles while you were in the seminary? As I joined in the seminary, after one week, I thought I had to go back. Uh. <laughs> because the life was such a struggle. Struggle in the sense, you know, you know, I joined the seminary after my high school final. So even though I heard so long of talk, um, you know, love and devotion and, you know, towards the priestly life, vocation, etc. But after going to the college and all, you know, there was a little bit of uh, a change of uh, mind and heart, we can see that. And after that, you know, I was living in the college life like I got, uh, when I all of a sudden came to the seminary, mm -hmm. it was a life entirely different. With the strict time day full, getting up early morning, like five, five o'clock or five thirty, like that, uh -huh. and we had to follow time table one after one after one, like that. It was so difficult for me. So I wrote actually back to my pastor. Uh, you know, I want to come back, uh -huh. and I was waiting for his uh, reply, but he never replied <laughs> to me. He and it up. <laughs> yeah, actually, then after some time, you know, I forgot about that, and uh, um, when I went for vacation home after, you know, after two years, I suppose. Uh, then I met him and asked, you know, he first asked me, why you were said that you wanted to come back? And after that, I never heard. Then I told him that that's why I'm waiting for your reply, but you never re replied <laughs> me. Then he told me that I want you to take decision. Uh, so that is why I didn't reply, he said. Oh, interesting. So that's what, how I remained again in the seminary. Mm -hmm. After once we uh, get into the uh, system automatically, mm -hmm. because of course, even then the all throughout the seminary life, I can say, this is a struggle, this is a struggle. Yes. How did you feel on your day of ordination? This was wonderful. Wonderful means I can't, you know, forget that at all because that's such a memorable day. It was such a memorable day, yeah. Did you have your whole family there? Yes, yes. I had only, except my dad, mm -hmm. all of them were my uncles, relatives. I can say this more than my family, N.T. Parish. Wow. N.T. Parish. And I was also privileged to, uh, you know, ordained by our late Cardinal um, Waki Videthil. I can never forget that. Uh, what community do you belong to? I belong to a community called ALCP, that is Apostolic Life Community of Puris. It is a, a missionary order. And uh, um, generally, we are known as Holy Spirit Fathers. Yeah, that's, uh, this is a missionary order. Can you give the viewers some ideas of the missions that you do? This community started in Germany during the Second World War time by a German um, diocesan priest. Hmm. And uh, after from Germany, it is, uh, first it went to uh, Africa. And that is why we have more priests in Africa than India or oh. any other place. Hmm. And um, yeah, from India, we have actually um, I think about we have 60, more than 60 priests now we have, because obviously it's an in congregation anyway. And the main work that we do, uh, mainly we do the parish ministry, and also we have got to some schools, and um, we also have the centers like uh, uh, people uh, physically challenged, mm -hmm. we take care of them. Father, do you have a special saint that you venerate? My personal. Our uh, devotion goes to St. Anthony, you know, because he's a very special saint for me. Uh, one particular reason, because um, close to my house, there is a St. Anthony shrine, mm -hmm. and in which I used to go, oh, oh, no, even now, when I go home, I, you, I go there and, you know, um, light the candles, and um, from my childhood, old owners, I can say that, um, um, we played in front of that shrine and everything that I, we, we did in front of that shrine. So always St. Anthony is just like a close neighbor. I picked St. Anthony as my son's middle name because oh, he's my patron saint. Wonderful, yeah. And everybody yeah. calls on St. Anthony uh -huh. to help them find their lost keys or yeah, lost yeah. And He's a special saint for yes. the, uh, those who lost, you mm -hmm. know, the pound to find. Yeah. What would you say is is the most wonderful part about being a priest. I love this life so much. That doesn't mean that I have no difficulties or any 
troubles or any kind of temptations, etc. In spite of all that, I trust my Lord completely with all my weaknesses and all my problems. I firmly believe that, you know, now I firmly believe that it is He who called me and He takes care of me. Mm -hmm. With all my struggles and troubles, as I said, being a human person, I have got all my problems, mm -hmm. all my weaknesses and all my difficulties. Mm -hmm. But in spite of all that, I firmly believe that. That is why what I do is that early morning when I get up, first thing that I do is that I give my kiss to my Jesus. And I might uh, light the candle. I have got a special candle that is, uh, um, you know, garden angel's candle, you know. Mm -hmm. I light that candle and I have got uh, like a few photos and statues, statues of uh, Blessed Mother Mary and uh, photo of St. Anthony, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, my pattern, um, is, uh, saint, I cannot say saint, uh, my pattern, uh, my parish is dedicated to the infant Jesus. Oh. So I have that photo with me too. So when I uh, was coming this side, my mom asked me to carry this, yeah. you know, <laughs> and I carried that uh, small uh, photo of uh, infant Jesus. And that is always on my table. And wherever I go, I take uh, along with that me. And I have that firm belief that uh, Jesus is always there to protect me, you know. Mm -hmm. So as what I said, as I get up, I uh, do this one. I light the candle and I pray. I stand a few moments in front of my, um, all these saints mm -hmm. and Jesus. And then I do my cleaning, etc. Then I come for prayer. So first thing what I do, is I give my kiss to Jesus. Mm -hmm. A beautiful way to start the day, mm -hmm. yes. So as I said, I just enter myself to Jesus' hands, then I start my things, whatever maybe, you know. That's why I'm so confident. I am, I, I know that he's going to take care of my life, mm -hmm. whatever maybe, yeah. Trust in the Lord, mm -hmm. yes. What gifts do you think God has given you to, to, to have this role at, in the priesthood? I think that, you know, I have got a friendly nature with the people. I can uh, get along with the people uh, mm -hmm. very well, you mm -hmm. know. That is one thing. Um, I do not know whether I'm <laughs> posting myself or not, but many people say that uh, um, I can do homily well, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so Sometimes I can do that in a very personal, uh, passionate way, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what many of our parishioners here also is, uh, comments me about, you know, my mm -hmm. homily, that, you know, my homily is more, uh, it is a lot of passion in it. That mm -hmm. is what I think that uh, even some, some other people also commented me about. I do not know whether I am posting myself or not, no, but uh, that is what I heard. Since gift. you asked me about, mm -hmm. I just had to say yes. that is what I To enable to articulate what it is that God is telling you is very important. You know, the, to be able to touch the parishioners. Mm -hmm. it, it's very important for yeah. a priest to be able to do that. That's right, and yeah. So you, you yeah. really give Yeah, that's what uh, many people told me also, because um, some people, you know, I remember that they also joined to, uh, in the church because they heard me and, you know, some people usually, you know, very, um, um, you know, I can say that they come very often time to, you know, mm -hmm. just talk with me like that, you know. That's wonderful. Yeah. Because people, they sometimes are in that valley of life and they, yeah. they yeah. really need to mm -hmm. talk to someone that, yeah. that can help in yeah. a prayerful then, way. Yeah. Then second thing is I feel that, uh, I feel always that I had to be available to the, you know, people. Even though I don't mind, is it my day off or not, mm -hmm. I can go if they need me. And if I don't go, you know, there is some kind of, you know, we can say it is a kind of precaution, conscience, you know. Uh -huh. I feel that, you know, you, Jesus made it be priest to, uh, to be available to these people. Mm -hmm. You know, it is not nice from my part to keep away from mm -hmm. them. But I always I, I have that feeling. Like Catholic guilt. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's why, <far>, yeah. <laughs> Um, um, have you ever uh, known anyone while you've been here in the parish that has come to you with vo questions about vocation, discerning the priesthood? You no, know, uh, so this uh, parish is uh, particularly a kind of uh, uh, elderly community. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't have many young people here. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, uh, particularly, I don't remember anybody has come in that way. But we had a seminary, now he's of course priest, and he used to come some time to me, some time back when he was doing his seminary studies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give a young person if they were discerning the priesthood? Yeah, seminarians, they come, especially I was also rector for some time for our order. <gasps> So I, I can uh, very well know what is their difficulties, the same difficulties I underwent also, no? Yeah. So I could uh, advise them in that way. You know, I always tell them, Christian life is not that easy life. It's a very hard life. But we firmly believe that who called us, mm -hmm. and, you know, if he's the one who called us, right. and uh, in spite of all these difficulties, we can live our priestly life wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And we have to have that faith. Mm -hmm. That is, I was to, I used to do Islam, you know? Yes, very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What do you like to do on your days off? Usually, um, I do some cooking because, you know, we don't have our cook or anything. We live by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Our parish uh, setup is such. Oh. So I do my cleaning and my laundry. And <laughs> sometimes I go out to visit some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that are the main things I do. Yeah, yeah. for day of... Uh, and also sometimes I do a little bit of uh, yard work. I like to plant some vegetables or flowers, etc. So yes. I have something of that sort too. Yeah. It's very therapeutic. To yeah, get yeah. Into I the love that dirt. how they grow like yes. me, so, so. <laughs> Usually early, every morning I go and see how much they grow like uh -huh. you know. That's so wonderful to see. Yes. Yeah. Yes, God's creations all around yeah. you. Yeah. Do you get back to India much? Yes, usually um, once in a year I go. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for spending this time with us. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly it's, it's refreshing to hear that even during your struggles and trials yeah, that yeah. when God calls you and he, he'll take care of you. That's right, yeah. you know, You're doing the will of God. You yeah. have to put your trust in him. Yeah, I have that form, uh, you know, faith. Mm -hmm. um, because always I believe that, as St. Paul said, you know, we are not worthy, but in spite of all our unworthiness, he calls and he gives that grace to live this life. Right. And that is my firm faith in Lord. Very nice. Yeah. Would you mind an, uh, ending in prayer and giving our viewing audience a blessing? Oh, sure. God, our Heavenly Father, thank you and praise you for this wonderful opportunity and wonderful life of priesthood. And especially as you call all of us, to this wonderful life, we praise and thank you for all that graces and blessings that you showered upon us. Lord, continue to bless us and all the priests and all your people, especially all the viewers of this program. We make this prayer through Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen.